Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We are back in the kitchen today and we are preserving apricots. So we don't actually have any apricots here on our homestead, though I would love to add some. I was able to get an awesome deal on 20 pounds of organic apricots from a local farm. So that's what we're gonna be working with today. So I have actually already started to preserve some of the apricots, but today we are hopefully going to finish them up. We aren't gonna be doing any plain canned apricots, just plain canned fruit is not typically a favorite of mine, with the exception of peaches. If I just want plain fruit preserved, I will typically freeze it or dehydrate it. And I do plan to do both of those as well, but I have some fun small batch recipes that I wanted to share with you today. So we're gonna be doing an apricot rosemary jam, an apricot jalapeno jam, a apricot barbecue sauce, an apricot habanero hot sauce, and then an apricot shrub. So I've got lots to get through today. Let's get started. So we're going to be starting out with the apricot rosemary jam and the apricot jalapeno jam. And we're starting out with those because both need to macerate with the sugar for at least an hour. So that way we can get started on the other recipes while these are macerating. So I'm gonna start out by pitting these and then just dicing them. And we're gonna add them to a bowl and then we will add in our sugar and let them macerate. So part of the reason that I got such a good deal on these is because some of them are quite small, as you will see, um, but for the price I paid, I really don't mind the little bit of extra work. Both of these jam recipes use about two pounds of apricots each, and as always, I'll have the full recipes for these in the description box down below. Now, neither of these jam recipes use pectin. I typically don't use pectin in things like apricot or plum jam, but for a berry jam, I do prefer to use it. So for the jalapeno apricot jam, I am just dicing up two jalapenos and you could choose to leave the seeds in or take them out. I'm leaving them in. Um, this would also, I think, be really good with habaneros or with chili flakes. So I'm gonna go ahead, get these diced up, add them in, and then we will add the sugar. Now for both the rosemary apricot jam and the jalapeno apricot jam, I think these are gonna be great additions to charcuterie boards or as glazes on meats. So I am excited to have these on the pantry shelf. Now onto the apricot rosemary jam. I just gave my knife and my cutting board a good wash so I don't have any of that jalapeno flavor coming through into this jam. And again, we're using two pounds of apricots for this jam, and I'm just dicing that up. And then I'm going to be adding in three tablespoons of chopped rosemary. Right, there's the rosemary and then we're gonna go ahead and add in our sugar. So a cup and a half of sugar into each bowl and we are using quite a bit of sugar today. It pains me a little bit, but realistically when we actually go to use these things, we're not using all that much. So I'm just giving these a really good stir and then we're gonna allow this to macerate for at least an hour. And during that time, the juices of the fruit are going to begin to dissolve that sugar. 
Um, so we're just gonna put this aside while we get started on some of the other recipes and then we will make our way back to the jam. Now the apricot rosemary jam will have some lemon juice in it as well, but I won't be adding that until we have this simmering on the stove. Now I've just moved those into the fridge as they're macerating and we're gonna get going on our apricot barbecue sauce and our apricot habanero hot sauce. So the next recipe that I'm working on is our apricot barbecue sauce. And this is adapted from the Naturally Sweet Food in Jars cookbook. Um, the author does have this recipe posted online. So I'll be sure to link that in the description box down below. And her recipe is for an apricot gochujang barbecue sauce. I don't have any gochujang on hand right now, so I'm gonna be substituting in just plain chili flakes. And for this, we are using four pounds of apricots. So I've got all my apricots diced and in my pot here. Now I'm just going to dice up about a cup of onion and then two cloves of garlic and add that to the pot as well. Now to that, I'm gonna be adding a tablespoon of chili flakes, a cup of honey, and then a cup and a half of apple cider vinegar. And then we're gonna get this simmering on the stove. This is still last year's honey from the bees. We haven't harvested any yet this year, but we should be pretty quick here. Okay, and then a cup and a half of apple cider vinegar. Now I'm just gonna get this simmering on the stove just over low heat for now while I get started on the apricot habanero hot sauce. Now I'm just about to get started on our apricot habanero hot sauce. And this is something that you could really adjust to your taste preference. So you could either reduce the amount of habaneros that you use, you could increase them, or you could just use a different hot pepper altogether. I think this would be really great with sugar rush peach peppers as well. Um, but the habaneros pair really nicely with the sweetness from the apricots and from the little bit of honey that we're gonna be using in this. So we're gonna get going on that. And I am really looking forward to adding more hot sauces to the pantry this year. So for this hot sauce, we're just gonna be using a pound and a half of apricots, and I'm just gonna dice those up like we did in the previous recipes and get those added to my pan here. And some of the other ingredients that we're gonna be using in this today are apple cider vinegar, a little bit of honey, a little bit of onion, garlic, some bell pepper, and then of course the habaneros. Okay, we've got all of our apricots diced up here and we just need a half of a bell pepper now. I had one here that I was gonna use, but I actually have some in the freezer that I need to use up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get a handful of that.
maybe about half a cup diced. And then we have our habaneros. I'm using three, as I mentioned, just because that's what I have. You could use a little bit less or a little bit more, um, just depending on your spice preference. And I'm just chopping them up. This doesn't need to be too fine because we are gonna be blending this with an immersion blender. And it's probably a good idea to uh, wear gloves as you're chopping hot peppers. I never do, so just watch what you touch after this. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna chop up a small onion as well. And then I'm just gonna be adding in two cloves of garlic as well. And two teaspoons of sea salt. And then a cup of apple cider vinegar. We're gonna do a quarter cup of our honey. And then I'm gonna add in about two tablespoons of lemon juice. And then we're gonna get this onto the stove. We're gonna get this to a simmer. And once everything's nice and soft, we will go ahead and blend it up with an immersion blender. All right, so as I was prepping all the ingredients for the hot sauce over here, I had the barbecue sauce just simmering on low heat on the stovetop. So once I came over here and I could watch it, I just brought this up to a boil and then reduced the heat and let that simmer. So I'm just gonna let this simmer for probably another five minutes and it's gonna be essentially the same process for the hot sauce. I'm gonna let that one go just a little bit longer um, since it didn't have the simmering time that the barbecue sauce did before. It's just gonna take a little bit longer for all of that to soften up before we blend it. All right, these are looking about ready to blend up with the immersion blender. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we will give them a taste and see if we need to adjust anything. So now that I've blended this with the immersion blender, I can see that I need to cook down this barbecue sauce a little longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that simmer for a while until it's a little bit thicker. As you can see, it's still quite liquidy for a barbecue sauce. And the hot sauce smells so good. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a taste to see if we need to adjust anything and get a feel for how hot that turned out. That hot sauce turned out absolutely perfect. That is for sure going to be a staple going forward. I am so excited to have that on the pantry shelf. So I like really spicy food and I feel like spice is kind of hard to gauge because everyone just tolerates it so differently. To me, that's more like a medium heat spice. If you don't like really spicy food, then maybe go one or two habaneros and you can always increase it after you've blended it and tasted it. Um, I could probably add another habanero or two, but that is so delicious with the honey and the apricots. Look at the color of this barbecue sauce. I am super happy with how it turned out. It is delicious. I probably ended up cooking it for about 20 minutes longer after I blended it with the immersion blender just until it was a good consistency for barbecue sauce. And now I'm just getting it added to some clean hot jars to half an inch of headspace. And we're gonna process this in the water bath canner with the hot sauce. Both are going to process for 15 minutes if you're below a thousand feet of elevation. If you're above that, you're going to want to adjust accordingly.
So our apricots and sugar for the two jams that we're making today have been macerating in the fridge for a few hours. So I'm gonna go ahead, get those out. We're gonna get those into some pots and get it made into jam. So over here we have our apricot jalapeno and then back here we've got the apricot rosemary. So I'm gonna bring both of these to a boil and then we're gonna cook them for about 15 minutes and then we should be good to go. So after the apricot rosemary comes to a boil, I'll go ahead and add in the juice of one lemon and that's just for flavor, it's not for acidity. Um, if you've watched any of my pantry tour videos, you've probably heard me say that I have too much jam, I don't need any more, but I think what I've come to is that I want a larger variety and smaller batches. So do I need more jam? No. Should I be making it? I mean, probably not, but here we are. And I think that both of these will be great for charcuterie or glazes on meats. So they'll be fun to have and we'll just get a few jars out of each. So the apricot chunks will break down a bit as this cooks, but I'm just going in with a potato masher just to help it out a little bit. We're starting to lose light. It's looking pretty gray outside, so I'm not sure if you're going to be able to tell, but I can see that this jam is just about ready. It's looking pretty glossy. Another way that you can check if it's done is by putting a plate in the freezer, scooping a little bit of the jam onto that plate, and then you can kind of see how it sets. But I think we're just about ready with this. So we've got both jams done. They look beautiful. And I'm just going to get these jars filled to a quarter inch of headspace. So you just never know what you're gonna get with peppers. This jam is delicious, but it doesn't have a whole lot of heat to it. So if I had more jalapenos, then I would have added another one. Um, again, the habanero would have paired really well with the apricot in this jam, but it is delicious either way. So we're just getting these rooms cleaned off really well with some vinegar. I'll get the lids on, get the rings on, and we're gonna get these into the water bath canner. And these are going to process for 10 minutes if you're below a thousand feet of elevation. Again, if you're above that, you're going to want to adjust accordingly. But this turned out perfectly. We had exactly four half pints of each recipe.
Hi guys, it is the next morning and I didn't get finished with the apricots yesterday. So we ended up just totally losing light. It got super gray outside. We got some rain, which I'm not upset about at all. Um, but I wanted to finish up with the apricots today. So we're gonna be doing the apricot shrub. And then at some point today, I need to get the rest of the apricots either into the dehydrator or into the freezer. So if you're not familiar with a shrub, they're also called drinking vinegars. And I like to use them just in some sparkling water as a mocktail. You could use them in a cocktail recipe as well. Um, but basically all we're gonna do is add a bunch of fruit. You could do just about any fruit that you like. I do have a recipe here on my channel for a blackberry shrub as well. Same concept. Um, I think pretty much the only fruit that I wouldn't do this with would be something like bananas but you are just going to take a quart jar, you can scale this up as you wish, and fill it about halfway, so about two cups of fruit. Then we are going to add in half a cup of sweetener. Um, I'm just using organic cane sugar for this. You could use maple syrup or honey. In that case, I would probably just leave that out until after this is sat for a few days. And then after we add the fruit and the sugar to the jar, we're gonna top that up with about a cup and a half of apple cider vinegar and I'm gonna let that sit on the counter for a few days. In the winter I like to let it sit for a little bit longer but it is staying pretty warm here so we're just gonna leave it for probably three or four days and at that point I'll go ahead strain out the fruit and this will last a good long while in the fridge. You can really get creative with this as I mentioned with fruit you could add different herbs as well I'm just gonna leave this super simple with just the apricots. Now to this jar, I'm adding a half a cup of organic cane sugar. I'm gonna get that all mixed together and we're gonna to top that off with the apple cider vinegar. And don't worry if the sugar doesn't all dissolve, that's totally fine when we add the apple cider vinegar in that's gonna help that as well. So I'm gonna add in a cup and a half of apple cider vinegar. Pretty much just going to top this up to just under um, the neck of the jar here. So a cup and a half of apple cider vinegar, and you wanna make sure that you're using raw apple cider vinegar so you can get all the health benefits. So just giving this a good stir, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add on our lid. And as I mentioned, we are going to let this sit on the counter for a few days, and then I'll go ahead, strain this off, and we will store this in the fridge. And when I go to use it, I'll probably use about an ounce in a glass of sparkling water. Again, you could turn this into a cocktail if you want, but if you're new to shrubs, play around with it. Try different fruits, try different herbs, um, but I'm excited to add another one to the fridge. Look at how pretty everything turned out. So I just need to get these all labeled up and finish off with those apricots and then get these all into the canning room. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here. We had a successful day of preserving yesterday. We got our barbecue sauce done, our hot sauce that turned out absolutely incredible, um, the apricot rosemary jam, the apricot jalapeno jam, and then we did a small batch of the apricot shrub this morning. So I think I still have probably about eight pounds of apricots that I need to deal with. So I think I'm probably just going to dehydrate all of that. I might end up deciding to throw some in the freezer as well. We'll just see how I'm feeling later today when I get to that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a little bit of inspiration. And thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.